welcome everyone to Race Face TV and today's WKA Race Life Spotlight. We've got a very special guest with us today as we go out to Las Vegas, Nevada and newly appointed President Kevin Williams. Kevin, how are you doing today? Rod, thank you. It's an honor to be here. Doing great. Well, we're glad to be here. Now, Kevin has been with the WKA for over 20 years. You don't look much older than that. What did you do? Start when you were like 10? <laughs> Water and vitamins. Water and, and my kids are nice to me. All right, there you go. So this is a brand new position for you. Again, you've been there for 20 years, but you've only been in the president's position for what, the last two, three months? Uh, yeah, may maybe six weeks. Six yeah, not weeks. even two months yet. It, it is, and I've, had, I've spent a lot of time. I've been in karting for 40 years since I was very young. My father raced cars before me, and my entire family is involved in, in motorsport at some point. And <clears throat> I've held various positions from race director to uh, international liaison for WK and did lots of things. I've been on their executive committee. So, uh, you know, we're all volunteers in these uh, positions, and we do anything to try and keep, uh, keep the sport rolling. And I just want to get people racing and keep them racing. And, uh, you know, on a personal side, I wouldn't be as close to my family without racing and as I am now. So um, I want to give some of that back. And that's why we do this. Yeah, you know, I hear that all the time. We, it's kind of funny because, you know, I love interviewing kids because they yeah. never, they never lie. You know, they just tell it like it is. And you always yeah. ask the kids say, you know, well, what about your friends? And, and, and immediately every single one of them says, well, all my friends are at the track. That's where yeah. my best that's friends right. are. So that's right. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and growing up, I missed a lot of parties and a lot of things that kids normally do, but I'm really glad I did. Yeah. So, so one of the things that, um, as a new partner of the WK myself, one of the things that I had to learn is that the WK is a membership owned organization. So it's actually owned by the members. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I said that one thing that I learned um, about the WKA is that, they, that the organization is actually owned by its members. Yeah, th that's right. Yeah, you know, we're, we're a nonprofit membership owned, membership owned. And you know what that really means is that the members come first. And we're, there was a time we kind of got away from that. And uh, it, now it's really time to get back to applauding the members. The members run the organization. They, they provide us input on what rules we want to run. They provide input on their preferred tracks that we want to go to, programs from the grassroots all the way up to the professional levels. And it's really their input that helps drive the organization. It's their organization, and they need to be applauded for that, and they need to be remembered that. We're, we're going to get back to a lot of programs that way. Yeah, I know being at a couple of your larger events, I was at Daytona, I was out at GoPro Motorplex. It takes an amazing amount of volunteers to run these multi-day events, and I applaud them. I say some of the hardest working people in racing are parents. Yeah, you're, you're right, and, and it takes thankless hours and countless hours, and, you know, it, there's a lot of folks that are involved that you actually didn't see at the events. Also, we have competition committees that may or may not attend the events, but the information that's channeled up from the members to the competition committee helps us drive the events that are most referable by the people actually doing the racing. So a lot of the, the people in the background, you didn't actually see at the events, but they played a major role in designing not only the rules, for, but the platforms, to the tracks, to the, to the procedures, to race timelines. And it really takes a conglomerate of effort to help steer the organization to, to make it an organization for the members. Right. So as the new president, I'm not going to put you on the spot here with a, t with a lot of detailed <laughs> questions. I won't yeah. do that to you. But I know <laughs> one of the things that you're focusing on is better communication with both the members and the WKA partners. Yeah, and that's right. And, you know, as I said before, the members channel up their ideas to, to the competition committees and ultimately our board of trustees who are actually voted in by the members. And we also like their input and we also want to give back to their, give back the input from what's going on in their organization. Uh, some of those things are, are uh, some of the programs we want to install. We want to say, gosh, do you like this track over that track? And, uh, but we, we really took a, a proactive role in how we're delivering messages to the members from, we've always had what we call a pit board announcement, and that's an email campaign, goes out to all of our master members. Uh, and then we, all, we really enhanced our social media platform in the last 12 months. We've even gone out and done some social media advertising to draw some of those folks back in so we can communicate to them. And what better way to do that with, Im than with images, right? So the images drive the interest and we give them the message 
and it, it's been a lot, a lot better uh, uh, to, to hear them communicate back because we can interact with them on social media. And then programs like this and with the uh, uh, race light driver spotlights and everything that uh, Race Face is, is doing. Well, we're glad to be a part of that. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of crazy because, you know, a lot of times for people that are, I'm going to just say uneducated, you say about go-kart racing and they're thinking about something like, well, yeah, you know, we go down, we get a little engine and put it on a little cart. Yeah. And then when you go to yeah. one of these events, I know the first time that I went to a major event and I walked in, I was literally blown away walking into some of these tents and seeing, you know, 25 to 50 carts. And I yeah. mean, these people are there, they are focused, they are committed, they are dedicated. And, and, and it's not a cheap sport to be a part of. It's no. not <laughs> no. at all. No, 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 it's not. And a lot of people say the cart is actually the least expensive thing of the whole program, right? So, so, but, and you'll also see some star power at some of these events too. Some of the people that you've seen racing cars for the years, bringing their children up and educating them again, with a focus on family, what better coach than your dad who's been an Indy 500 winner, right? So, you know, some of these, some of these folks that are very serious about what they do, but at the same time, some of them have, have aspirations to race. So we have lifetime drivers. Our road racing program has, has many competitors that have been road racing for over 20 or 30 years. And then our, in our sprint, man, in our man cup program, we see drivers that are still driving and they've been in the sport for 20 or 30 years and bringing their kids into it. So, I mean, it's very serious, but at the same time, again, family, relationship building, and a way to uh, spend your weekend rather than mowing the lawn, right? That's right. Well, I, I tell you, when I was at Daytona, that was very cool. I was down, you know, right there in turn three, and I was around all those young kids and the younger parents, and I felt really old. And then I went down to the paddock <laughs> area, and where all the guys were running around the big track, and I was like, man, I'm like a young guy in here. Yeah, you and, are. <laughs> and even standing on pit road that's there, right. you know, I looked to my right, yeah, and right. I saw I saw an old friend there. I was like, there's Juan Pablo Montoya. And I turned around, and there yeah. was Emerson Fittipaldi. I mean, think about right. that. There are people that <laughs> right. go and his out. And Emerson's, Emerson's grandkids are there. Exactly. So yeah. that, was, uh, that was really cool. So I know another one of your goals is to increase membership and the participation yep. of the members. You want to go into that a little bit? Sure. You know, what there, there's again, there's a lot of programs that were either didn't get as much love as some of the other programs in the past, and that's really nobody's fault other than just a turn of, of the times. And with that, we, we, we have missed out on, on uh, supporting some of our members. So we want to get back into some of the programs that were very successful and have been a, part, a staple of our organization. WK is known as the foundation of motorsports, and we like to think, that like to say we have a place for everybody. If somebody doesn't even want to race and they want to learn uh, event management, we even have a place for them. And we can help people understand the operations of, a, of an event or a race, and that might help them later on in life in a real job, all through karting. Um, <clears throat> but some of the programs that we want to get back into, we're, 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 we want to uh, help out our oval racers that we only service maybe once a year at Daytona, both dirt and pavement. Um, so we're looking at ways that we can pro, uh, promote events that way. And then uh, one program that uh, we uh, did not have last year, but we've had for many years before that, was our Gold Cup program. And that's mainly for the four cycle racers who race on sprint tracks. They really haven't had a place for, uh, for, for them to call WK home. And we need to get back to that and service that member. Well, I know your program works because one of my drivers is Sam Mayer. And Sam came out of out of go-karts. He's now racing for Junior Motorsports yep. in the Cars Tour. Right. We're going to put him in some K&N yep. races later this year. We're putting in some ARCA races. Great. And I'm going to tell you what, that young kid went down to New Smyrna and raced in that World Series of Stock Car Racing. He had some of the sure. best late model drivers in the country. And he finished two points out of winning the championship, seven races in oh nine nights. And up until the last night, his worst finish was fourth. So I looked at karting oh. and I thought, wow, what a great... Yep place to start and be able to develop your skills and even talking to Sam sure. he, 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 he gave a lot of feedback that yeah it's a lot different now racing a 3500 pound car with a lot of horsepower but boy my reflexes and a lot of that stuff I learned I actually learned in that go-kart so yeah and that's another that? thing karting does it's another thing karting does you know you learn racecraft even if you don't become a race car driver you'll be a better driver on the road 
And when you get uh, when they get old enough to get a driver's license, a lot of them don't have a driver's license yet. They also learn car control and set up, and they can talk to their crew when they do cars. They have a better knowledge, reacts what what decisions are made of to run better for them. Well, I'll tell you what, I live in Florida where all the retirees at. We need to bring some go-karts down here and teach a bunch of them how to drive. So I know that this week the WK is sanctioning uh, the Purdue Electric Karting Series, and that's going to be at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And I believe this is your second year in doing that. It is, yeah. You know, this is a conglomerative effort uh, between uh, one of our partners, uh, uh, McLaughlin Motorsports, and uh, also with the Purdue University and one of their STEM programs, they they gather up, and it's a year-long program. This is just a, the, what they call the, the championship race. And we actually do it in the parking lot right behind the main grandstand at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway while the Indy cars are practicing all day. And it, st it started started on Monday, and then it goes through Tuesday. If there's one of those rain days, it'll, continue, it'll conclude on Wednesday of this week. And it, we, there's a high school category, and there's a collegiate category. Those drivers actually started a year ago in their class, and they started designing the car based off of it's, – it, it's actually we give them the foundation of the car because that's always crash-tested, homologated, things like that. But then they build it from there. They build their teamwork. They build their strategies. They build their electric engines. They build everything that needs, that needs to happen. And then at the race, they're under even more pressure because, you know, you're going on track in five minutes. You can't just say, okay, well, let's nick back on it on Tuesday, you know. So – it's a team effort and get, gives them a lot of lifelong skills through karting. And by the way, at the end, somebody gets a trophy. Right. That's pretty cool. So I know that one of the first things that you did is you guys went on a road trip. And you did a road trip with Chairman Mike. <laughs> is it Terrell? We did. And you guys yeah. visited the National Road Racing event in Atlanta. So how did that go? Oh, gosh. We, you know, um, I, I, as I said, you know, it's, it's good to get back to the members and communicate with them. And you really just have to be there, listen to them, and see what see what their concerns are, their ideas. They're all a great bunch of people, and sometimes we don't connect with them enough. What better way than to be at their events and cheer them on, and uh, hear what they have to say, and see some of the challenges that they're up against? We uh, we started at um, uh, with with our chairman Mike Tetrell. We went down and we started at uh, a dirt race because uh, our dirt community has been underserved, and uh, so we said hello to them. A lot of great people, uh, met a couple track track partners, uh, met a couple of our, uh, our, our uh, sponsors and partners who were there at the event. They were just thrilled that we were, we were there and, and communicated and had, listened to what they had to say so we can take this information back and see how we can better serve them. Then the next day we did a, uh, a long drive up to Atlanta and um, visited with our road race community and uh, we actually even gave away some prizes. They actually waited for me to draw the tickets. So. Uh, they, were, they were real happy after that, especially, right? But, um, but again, they were, they were folks who said, gosh, you know, it, the, you guys have, have come around more often than we've seen in the past. And we say, you know what, we're getting back to that. We want to hear what you have to think so we can help you. Uh, and, you know, sometimes the answer is no, but we do the best we can to uh, design programs that, that make them want to come to our events. Right. I got a question for you. Um, when I was at Daytona, the road racers, they were yep. racing down the back straightaway in through turns three and four. How yep. fast were they actually going? They looked like oh. little BBs. <laughs> well, you know, they, they have so many classes with so many engine configurations. Some of them have one engine, some of them have two engines. The guys with two engines have been, have been doing it for a long time. Uh, they're, they're getting close to 120, 125 down the end of that straightaway. And it's just it's staggering how fast they can go. And then they laugh about it and have a great time afterwards and high five each other. And, you know, but uh, that, that's road racing, you know, like, like the family of, of motorsports, karting is the same way. Yeah, that, that was very cool. I, would, I was really impressed. To be truthful with you, it's the first time I had seen lay down carts actually yep. live. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. You know, I was thinking, I don't know if I'd want to do that or not. I'm a pretty big boy. I don't think I'd fit in that very well. So I know <laughs> there, that you. There are a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun, and you know, road racing is, is really an opportunity to pe for drivers to really feel what a draft feels like. And you know, we try and encourage some of our sprint racers to go to some of the smaller road racing tracks uh, because it's it's really a blast to be able to 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 navigate a racetrack 
under different conditions. You break a lot quicker. You get, you, the, the clutch doesn't jump off the corners like you see on a sprint track. And then the draft is amazing. You can actually feel yourself getting sucked up behind the person in, in front of you, and you learn an awful lot just by going out and doing some road racing. And I encourage any of, the, any of the sprint racers to give it a try. Yeah, I got, I got to think that would be a thrill. You're at over 120 miles an hour. You're laying down, and you're in a bank at Daytona four stories high. I mean, that's, that's got to be the <laughs> thrill ride of all thrill rides. So I know that Absolutely. you recently started a new start karting page on your website. Can you talk a little bit about that program? Yeah, you know, that was, that was an effort by our Board of, board of Trustees, and they were really um, interested in having some. There, there really wasn't anything on the World Karting Duck site that said, you know what, here's what, here's how you can get started. And so we, we designed a start karting page, and it, it's not a great where here's a Yamaha, here's, a, here, here's an IAMI engine. That's, it's not about that. It's the moving people from interest in motorsports and maybe even from indoor amusement karting or those type of things, they want to take it to the next step. But we also mentioned in there that, as I said before, WK has a place for everybody. We can teach people event management. It's good for mechanics. We've even had companies like Snap-on Tools come to us before and say, gosh, these folks here know their tools. Maybe they can help us develop some other tools or get, provide input. We've had that happen before. So there is people who actually get hired out of karting because of their knowledge in mechanics, in racecraft, in, in team management, in event management. And then, of course, they have good work ethics because they have to get the track at 7 a.m., right? So, That's right. Uh, but <clears throat> But we, and we wrote that in such a way, we found on the internet, a lot of people are going with the, with the resurgence of indoor karting, they're going out indoor karting, then they're searching, what do I do next? What's the next step? And so we wrote that in such a way, we said, look, give us a try. Our tracks have, uh, have amusement karting. You can give it a try on a real racing track. Talk to them. We have links to our tracks. We're actually writing a, links to our uh, kart shop partners so they can go to a place. And I guarantee you, within an hour or two hour drive or less, wherever somebody is in the United States, we have a place for them to go learn more from our partners around the United States. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much a great way to do it. I mean, you look at the facilities like you have at, in, uh, in Mooresville, like GoPro Motorplex, and I think there's a big one down in the, in the Texas area. You know, you bring a kid in there and you set him in a cart, he goes out just for an amusement ride if you want. Guess what? I would have to believe he's getting out going, Mom, Dad, we need yeah. to go racing. And I hear that it, all the time. It smiles this big. Yeah, absolutely. Right? <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I know yeah, one and thing. That, that's what we wanted. That's that's what we wanted to do is get them to a facility, learn more, talk to our partners who are already in the field and they do this every single day. And uh, you know, hopefully they'll get a new customer and we'll get a new carter. And I know one of the things that we had discussed about a little bit earlier was um, that members are giving you some feedback and you guys are listening. And one of the things that you're addressing is to get out the rule book and the schedules a little bit earlier than what's pretty much yep. been done in the past. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and again, a conglomerate effort from the competition committees to the board of trustees. We've already, we, one of the first things we did was set that schedule and say, look, let's, let's service these members. Let's get them the information they need to go racing. And uh, one of those easiest things is rule book and schedule. So everybody has their, uh, understands the deadlines that they're up against. We're already starting edits on the current rule book, um, and we're, we're, we're looking at the industry standards and some of the things that need to be changed now. And then um, we'll have it out early enough for people to really understand it and have time to review it before we kick off our new year in Daytona. Right. And I know, again, we talked about this a little bit earlier in the program, but one of the other things that you're doing is going out and kind of reestablishing and looking for new partnerships, just like the new arrangement that we have here at Race Face Brand Development. Right. And we're excited yep. about, you know, our future with you guys. And uh, so we want to, we want everyone to know that that's viewing the show tonight that race face brand development is here. If you just want to call and use us for some advice, we're here for that. We can do a lot of different things. We, you know, Kevin, you and I talked, and then I talked with Kelly Frazier a little bit about our race face tell med program. And that's a strong program. We didn't do it. It's not about making money on that thing. It's all about making sure that when these kids are out, that you have access to a doctor 24 seven, no matter where you're at. So again, I just want to thank you for myself and, and everyone here at, uh, at Race Face Brand Development for kind of, you know, welcoming in 
welcoming us into your family with open arms. And, and it's, uh, it's really good. Of you course. guys got a of great course. And, staff you know, in North Carolina too, man. I mean, you call their well, th stuff Thank happening. you. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very customer service oriented and uh, they're, they're efficient, which has been fantastic. And they're a great group of people to work with. But, you know, the services that, uh, that, that Race Face and, and uh, the Telemed program, we've never had that. And it's more member benefits uh, to, for our members People can can uh, enhance their media relations skills. They can get medical treat, uh, medical assistance. They've never had those things before. What better way? It was a perfect marriage for us. Those are the kind of member benefit relationships we're either looking to reinvigorate from uh, reinvigorate from from the past or create new. We had we had a lot of time on the phone <laughs> talking to a lot of people, and I think uh, our membership will be excited to hear what's coming up in the future. Well, Kevin, I really want to thank you for being with us tonight. And so for people that might have been tuning into the show to, uh, to get up with uh, our young driver, Christian Ruddy, Christian actually came down with, with a little bit of an illness and wasn't able to make it. So, you know, Kevin stepped up on real short notice. So, Kevin, again, thank you for being with us. Everybody, My thank pleasure. you for tuning in to Race Face TV and Race Life Spotlight with the WKA. We'll see all of you back here next week.